Hey guys, how's it going? Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We're going to do a quick video on composite functions. This won't be too long. This is a, just a kind of a brief subject in the first part of Calculus 1 in university, but it's obviously something that we need to, uh, to get down and we need to master for the test, so we're going to go over it. Okay, so a composite function essentially is two functions combined into each other. Okay, and what I've done is I've written a definition up here in pink, and it says, given two functions f and g, the composite function of f, uh, and that's a little circle there, okay? So I'm just gonna call it f of g, is defined by f of g x equals f of g of x, okay? So what that means is we have f circle g, okay? We're gonna take g of x, okay? And we're gonna put it into f of x, into the argument of f of x, all right? And if you, you t just, you know, direct your attention below at this note, F circle G is not the same thing as G circle F. Okay, don't make that mistake because that's uh, that's a prime way to make you know get the the question wrong. And you know for sure that your professor, uh, when he puts a, a little trick or when she puts a little trick in here uh, to try and fool you on the midterm, that's going to be the trick. Okay, is, is she, they're going to separate it and you're going to need to or they're going to flip it and you're going to need to know how to do one and how to do the other. Okay, so. For, uh, for an example here, I've written down for f circle g, okay, you apply the second one, okay? So you apply g first to the function, then you apply f, okay? And I think you'll understand what I mean by that when we, when we solve the first question. So enough talking, let's get into the questions, all right? So question one we have, if f of x is equal to x squared and g of x is equal to x minus three, find the composite function of f circle g and of g circle f. Okay, so let's do the first question, all right? So, let's do question one. Okay, so we have f circle g, all right, of x. All right, and let's just rewrite that according to the definition up here. Okay, so we have f of g of x, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're gonna look at g, we're gonna take g, okay, and we're going to apply it first so coming down here, okay, so we have f of, what's g? x minus three, so let's go ahead and let's put that inside the function, okay? And what is that equal to? Well, we're going to now apply f, okay? And what is f? Well, f is squaring, okay, the, the function, all right? And well, that's all we have to do here, okay? So that is equal to x minus three squared. And it's as simple as that. I mean, this is a pretty straightforward section, but it can get tricky. And you'll see that when we move on to the second question. This one is just to kind of uh, get an understanding of the difference between the two. So that's good, that's question one down. All right, now let's take a look at the opposite. All right, and let me just circle these. So let's take a look at the opposite of G circle F. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, let's write it out exactly the same way that we did for the first one. Okay, and this is going to be G, all right, of f of x. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's take f of x and we're gonna apply that one first, right? Because in this one we applied the g first, right? Because it was the second one. Now the second, uh, the second term is f, so we're gonna apply that one first, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and say that this here is equal to g of x squared, right? So we have g of x squared, so we've taken f and we've applied it inside the function g. Okay, and now we're going to apply g, okay? So now we're going to apply g, which is x minus three, okay? And that is going to be x squared minus three. Okay, so there's the difference, all right? That's the difference there, is when we applied f first and then we applied g, we squared the entire thing, but when we applied f first, then we applied g after that, okay? The square did not apply to the negative three, just to the x. So that's, that's the, the trick to take away from that question, and that also shows you the difference. So in this case, when we applied the g first, we put this x minus three inside the argument of f, and then we applied the square. However, in this question, when we applied f first, which was x squared, then applied the g, we added the negative three. So the square did not apply to the entire term here of x minus three. So that's, that's the point to take away from this one. And that's something that you know you have to be familiar with and careful with, and you know just do a few problems in your book uh, on this, and, and you'll you'll start to get the hang of it. Okay, so let's do a, a much trickier problem. Question two. 
So if f of x is equal to arctan x, so if, if we don't know what arctan is, uh, you should be familiar with that by now, but that's inverse tan. So tan inverse of x, that's just a different way of writing it. So this is the same thing as tan inverse, okay? Uh, and g of x is equal to four ln x plus one minus root three. Okay, find f circle g of zero, g circle f of zero, and find the domain of f circle g of x, okay? So, oh, this is a little bit of a trickier question, and it's actually fairly simple, but, but tricky, okay? So let's do question one first, all right? And we, we're asked to evaluate f circle g of zero, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did up here. Okay, we're gonna go apply g first. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're also going to apply that zero, okay, to g. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to look something like this. So we have f of g of zero, all right? And I'm just gonna write that below. And you know, if we go ahead and plug in zero here, we'll see that uh, we're left with ln one minus three, okay? And ln, as we know, ln one is equal to zero, all right? That's something that you're gonna have to know, okay? Ln one is zero and ln zero is undefined. So if we have a ln, this entire term is zero, okay? We're left with f negative root three. And if we have f of negative root three, if I just bring you back up here, now if we apply f, okay, we are going to have, this is equal to arc 10 negative root three. So if we have, uh, that, that, that's it, we've applied the, uh, the composite function, all right? But we're not done yet because this isn't a variable, this is a number, all right? And we, this is defined somewhere. So if you remember from high school, and this is probably something that you should have learned in high school, but if not, no worries, we'll teach it to you now, is you have something called similar triangles when we're dealing with radians, okay? Radian measurements, so like pi over two, pi, two pi, all right? And this triangle here, all right? And as we can see here, so the argument of arctan is negative root three, and that's over one. Okay, so if we draw our triangle here, all right, and this triangle, so there's two triangles. There's the one, one, root two triangle, and then we have the two, root three, one triangle, okay? And the angles in this triangle here are pi over three, okay? This one is pi over six, and this one is just 90 degrees pi over two, okay? So we can use that now to figure out what arctan of negative root three is, okay? And see this negative here? So with this negative, all right, you need to know if the function's even or odd, okay? Because that's gonna determine whether or not you carry that negative over to the pi over three. So in this case, arctan is an odd function, okay? Arctan's an odd function. So what that means is arctan of negative x is going to be equal negative arctan x, okay? So for example, if this was cosine, all right, the negative sign wouldn't carry over. So cosine of negative root three would just be cosine of root three, all right? So in this case, arctan is an odd function. So we know that our answer is going to be negative, all right? And if, uh, if you're not too familiar with that, we're gonna do another video that goes into more detail with uh, even and odd functions. So don't worry too much if you didn't get that. So anyway, let's take a look at the triangle, all right? And as we know, tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? From our trigonometric uh, days in high school. So, all right, uh, we have negative, we have root three over one, okay? So let's find where root three over one is. And our opposite here is gonna be root three. And if our adjacent is one, okay? That means that this angle has to be the one that we're looking for, okay? and that angle is equal to pi over three. And this triangle is just something you have to memorize. It's not something that I proved or anything, okay? So, like I said before, from starting from this angle, pi over three, opposite over adjacent is uh, root three over one. And that means that our, and remember, bring the negative because our 10 is odd, and we have negative root pi, uh, sorry, negative pi over three. And that is the answer to question one. All right, so let's go ahead and do question two. Okay, so now the question is asking us to find g circle f of zero. So we're gonna approach it exactly the same way. Okay, we have to find g circle f of zero. That is going to be equal, I'm just gonna work down now. Okay, that's going to be equal to g of f of zero. And now if we go ahead and apply zero to f, all right, because okay, in this case we applied f first into g, and we're gonna apply the zero to that. 
arctan of zero is just zero. So that means that g of zero, okay, so we have g, all right, and we're gonna go ahead and apply g of zero, right? Because f of zero is zero, arctan uh, at zero is zero. And that is going to be equal to, if we apply zero, we did that already in this step, all right, ln one is zero, and we're just gonna be left with negative three. And that's the answer for that one. All right, perfect. So that one was easy. Uh, you know, we applied the zero to the arctan, then, uh, so f of zero, so arctan zero is equal to zero. And so then g of zero, applying zero into g, we end up with negative three. So that's how we got that answer. So a little bit confusing, I know, but that's uh, the best way we can explain it. Question three, let's take a look at this one. Find the domain of f circle g of x. Okay, well, that's a good question. So first of all, when we're looking at a composite function here, we want to take a look if f is uh, defined everywhere or not. And if we take a look at f uh, of x is equal to arc tan x, we know that arc tan x is defined for all real numbers, okay? Uh, so if, if arc tan x is defined for all real numbers, we want to take a look at the composite function then, okay? So let's take a look at g of x, okay? g of x, so we do have a domain issue here, right? Our domain issue is that ln x always has to be, or the x has to be greater than zero, okay? For it to be defined, because ln is only defined from zero to infinity, okay? So let's take a look at the inside of the argument here, and we know that for the domain of g of x, x plus one, must be greater than zero, okay? And x must be greater than negative one. All right, so we know now that g is defined for greater than negative one, x is greater than negative one, which means that the domain of f circle g of x, okay, is when x is greater than negative one. Okay. So I, I know that can be a little bit confusing. I tried to explain it as best I could for question two. That's a tricky question. That's something that you could look for definitely on the exam. Uh, you know, the, the best way to practice composite functions is just to do a bunch of them. This is just kind of to introduce to you the, the idea of it so that you're familiar with it and you can uh, attempt trickier and more problems, okay? So, you know, go and do that. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped you and stay tuned for more.